What up YouTube, Bonsai here, back with another video. So yeah, this is going to be a discussion between me and my buddy Mad Jack on the Netflix live action One Piece. So for those of you who weren't aware, uh, the footage that you're about to see was originally recorded five, six weeks ago, uh, about the same week that the One Piece live action came out for the first time. So basically what happened was I had a bunch of my friends watch the show and we recorded this footage the same weekend that the show was initially released. But I couldn't release this part of the footage uh, because, well, basically my exams were coming up and so I had to postpone uh, releasing this part of the footage. Now the first half of it was a discussion between me and my friend Mix as well as Jack. And Mix who was someone who hadn't watched the Netflix uh, the One Piece anime or read any of the manga, so he was a complete noob to uh, One Piece and anime in general. So if you want to watch a complete noob's first time reaction to that, you can check out the previous video that I did, which uh, features Mix. Now in this one, it's just going to be me and Mad Jack, and we're just going to go over the entire series because uh, Mad Jack and I being fans, we just binged the entire series in one go once we got our hands into it. So yeah, that's what this video is going to be now. So with that intro out of the way, Oh yeah, just one minor disclaimer, because the video was done so much long ago, Magic and I really had no idea how most non-One Piece fans would feel about the show. And so, we may have judged it a little harshly, uh, in hindsight. But yeah, that's in hindsight. At the time though, uh, he and I were quite skeptical about whether or not this show would really take off. But yeah, with that uh, little disclaimer out of the way, let's get right into the review. Okay guys, so it's just me and Jack now and we're going to be going over uh, our thoughts on the rest of the series uh, moving forward. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Jack, was there anything about the first two episodes or any like easter eggs that you wanted to point out and like discuss like with me and all the uh, other main fans of the show, like uh, um, easter eggs that you wanted to talk about before we move on to the rest? Uh, so I, I just mentioned for me, I wanted to point out so that initially the fight between Zoro and Mr. Seven that was actually a callback to something that happens later on in Arabasta when they mentioned that uh, Zoro killed one of their agents back in East Blue. And it was never actually shown in the anime, but in the live action, they actually uh, went out of their way to show that Zoro killed him right here. So it was like a, an Easter egg thing that was never done in the anime that they brought to life in the live action. That was the whole fight between Zoro and Mr. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a couple of them, yeah. So that was one of them, yeah. The Mr. Seven, that one. Yeah, that was that was a cool part. And then uh, there was a couple of them. Uh, not really, I would say, uh, Easter eggs. Uh, for, the, for the anime itself, there would be also that part where uh, they, uh, they took on... Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, the one that Sanji cool. feeds and he comes with the... Uh, oh, Jin, yeah. Sanji feeds that... Jin, uh, Jin, uh, yeah. Jin, yeah. But Jin. Jin's crew... Don Creek's crew. ...completely annihilated by... Um, Mihawk. Mihawk. He gets completely annihilated. In in the in the anime, it's just that you get uh, the... Jin and his crew are running away from Mihawk, who's chasing them. But then, in the live action, you just show... They show, like, Mihawk actually taking on the entire fleet. Yeah. And Decimated Jin is the last survivor who comes on, yeah. But uh, they yeah. don't, they're, they're, so it's kind of like an Easter egg, I guess you could say. Yeah, Easter egg. Like they, they, like, yeah, they mention it off camera and stuff like that. Yeah, so they, yeah, one or two things here and there. One of things. We'll, I think we'll come. Uh, I want to talk about that scene, but let's uh, let's like go go in order and uh, work up to it. So uh, I think yeah. So for the first first in general, like in, for the opening, how did you feel as like someone who is a fan of One Piece, how did you find the opening in the first episode? But specifically the opening, and then after that, your overall impression of the first episode. So for the opening, I loved it in the sense that it was very, um, it held on to the source material on how they found Luffy. A bit times throughout the show, they do deviate. But uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, comforted with the knowledge that Oda himself, the creator of One Piece, was there. Mm -hmm. And for any adjustments, he gave the green light to go around. You guys can do this and that. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the first essence, like for the whole show, 
I appreciate that Netflix in the um, the management and whoever the production team was, the writers and everyone, they took inspiration not only from Oda, but they also allowed him to have his say on how the One Piece live action like went about. Sure. So if there yeah. was any changes at all, Oda was there to give the authority to go ahead like, yeah, that's fine, you can keep these characters out or you could twist this in a fact. But in in essence, all in all, I, I love the fact that uh, the opening, yeah, kind of was somewhat most in most parts true to the anime itself mm-hmm. it definitely captured the, the spirit and gave off the vibe i was like i said i watched a lot of reactors impressions of that first episode oh, yeah. they they all said that it felt like you know like a fun piratey theme to it but it like obviously was not afraid to go like go into like gratuitous stuff and just show some of those aspects of like the, the pirates uh you know, lifestyle, because obviously they kill people and they do some scummy things. And some pirates are particularly bad, you know, like, but I mean, like Buggy for all his cloudiness was definitely a very cruel, like, <laughs> evil character with what he did to that town and their, their members and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's like the show just has a unique perspective of like, it has these really dark themes that are like at the, at the beneath it, but then it like masks it with like this surface level humor and stuff like that. And yeah, the show, yeah, the anime has great. that, and then the show too has that, which I think is like pretty important. They, I'm glad they captured that in, uh, in those first uh, live action parts. So moving on to like the second arc, which would have been, you know, I mean, so there's Buggy, but then uh, after, oh yeah, how'd you feel about Buggy? Let's let's specifically talk about Buggy first before we move to something. All right, first of all, I'd say the best portrayal. I'd say, not best portrayal, I'd say he he's acting blew it out of the park. It did at times mm. feel like it was like uh, he came straight out of the actor's school or whatever, what do you call it, like he probably graduated. It felt like that with some of his monologues and everything, like you could tell that like, oh, he definitely got some acting training from somewhere. Sure. But yeah. all in all, he was the best character ever. I like how they portrayed mm. Buggy in himself. Like in the beginning, mm-hmm. he's this big scary guy. Everyone's afraid of him. He's so gruesome. He does all sorts of st- stuff. But throughout the, when the show right. progresses, you get to see how goofy and like how funny Buggy is. Like he's just like <laughs> a goof. Even though in the in the beginning, like as as it is to the anime, like as soon as you meet Buggy, he's like this notorious figure who was on um uh on the same ship as Goldie Roger. But then when the movie uh, when the enemy itself progresses and also in this movie as it progresses yeah. towards the end you see like he's just like a goofy sort of pirate character yeah at the end in I... essence so I, I like how they portrayed buggy in all he's like one of the best uh, characters that like throughout in the, this yeah, the live yeah. action that they portrayed accurately yeah i i think i can co-sign that i i'm genuinely interested in what mix and rusty would think of his character towards the end because like for me personally buggy after the first watch through of the anime, I sort of wrote him off and didn't think anything of his character until like, until way later at the, like the Marine Ford uh, arc, when we actually learn about Buggy being part of Gold Roger's crew and stuff like that. And that just added like so much more relevance and importance to his character. So I'm interested in seeing where Meeks and Rusty will end up, uh, how they'll end up feeling about his character at the end of the series. And then, you know, God help me if they do the, the, <laughs> the rest of it all the way to the Marine Ford. What it would be like to like have that big reveal of Buggy, like how the normie audience is gonna feel. I mean, there's so many big reveals that are just gonna shock the audience. I, I genuinely can't wait. For people who do not <laughs> watch the anime yet, yeah. and if they follow the live action, there's a lot of foreshadowing involved. There's a lot of shocks that are gonna be revealed. It'll still so be nice to see them. Rusty, yeah, yeah, mix it. Yeah, um, I'm just interested in how they'll take it. How they'll take it. Likewise. One thing that I I would have wanted to see would uh, ask them on those. Um, Shanks's hockey moment, but actually, how did you feel about Shanks uh, when he used his hockey? Uh, like they changed, they made it a bit more obvious. They they, they 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 did make it a bit more obvious, but they also didn't show too much like for the hockey, which is like the the anime itself. Like when he does his hockey, all you see is the pupils and everything, but they don't actually show anything. Later on, we find out that when they introduce hockey, we find out that oh, that was hockey, and Shank did use it. But back then, yeah. we didn't know anything about hockey, and then like yeah. how they're introducing hockey in there, just undertones, always foreshadowing. That's what Oda yeah. is good for. 
So that yeah, was it. like I, I really, uh, yeah, it was really nice how they put that hockey moment for Shanks. Yeah. In. So what I can say is a lot of the reactors were thinking that Shanks must be a devil fruit, uh, <laughs> you know, user, because that's all they know right now. They don't know about hockey. <laughs> the they reactors don't know about hockey. Are, yeah. So the the, the non anime yeah. watching reactors that I've been watching, most of them have been saying that they think he's a devil fruit user or something. I mean, they didn't really. Cause it, it slipped their mind, but the. the one or two like mentioned, hmm, he must be a devil fruit user. Uh, yeah, and it would be the same when we started watching One Piece for the first time and when Shanks pulled it off. We know he's a badass, but we don't know how bad of an ass he is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah. They're not going to know. They're not going to know. Um, so just we're kind of jumping ahead here, but I kind of want to, since you, I'm too excited that I kind of just want to get this up now. Remember when Mihawk shows up to show Shanks uh, Luffy's uh, poster? He says a line there, and I'm oh, wondering yeah. how many of the reactors that I'm watching are gonna catch it. He says a line to Shanks when he gets there. He was like, "Isn't this for like? Isn't it? What what's a man like you doing in a place like this? A man of your stature doing in a place like this? Like, uh, Mihawk says that to Shanks, which is like alluding to the fact that Shanks is somebody, right? They're not gonna know. I wonder if they're exactly. gonna. That's the thing. I'm genuinely interested in whether or not." new fans are going to catch that statement and whatever and be like wait is shanks more than just a regular pirate because right now there's they don't know anything the the, the power ceiling that they, they know, know of is they know true. that it's uh they know shibukai they don't know that there's a completely different level that's even higher than shibukai they're not even aware of that no they don't so they only know about the the warlords they, they only know the about the and that's all they know <laughs> did you caught uh -huh. that too or did you catch that like that little that little jab that yeah, I caught it, I caught it. <laughs> it it kind of blew over my head because I already know like what's up, but yeah, that particular moment uh, for people who haven't watched the anime, yeah, it would it would it would have been like, but it went unless over they my were paying like I did not I did not pick it up. I mean, I now that you mentioned it, I do realize that oh yes, that was a foreshadowing moment in itself that statement, but it just went over my head because I already know it as a fact of what um, Shanks is. Shanks now. is, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I picked that up like immediately and I was like, damn, yeah, because like, I was like, the, they, they, the Helm Apple gave her like an over, when he was like, there's this like legendary pirates that the government got to work for them, but I, well, actually, that's something that I don't know. People, would people in the East Blue, they should be aware that the, the four emperors exist, right? Or is that something well, in the law where it's like the government's, emperors. the government suppresses knowledge of the four emperors outside of the Grand Line, maybe? Instead, I don't, I don't actually well, know of any information. Well, in, in, in a sense, like this, the people of the East Blue, like Luffy, where he came from, they practically know nothing about emperors or warlords. They're just like a small rinky dink town in the middle of nowhere of the, in the side of East Blue, you see? So it depends. East like, Blue is the weakest. Is knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah. So knowledge, as you know, it doesn't really go around. People know things. Luffy, for us, we're, we're going through the journey through what Luffy knows we're getting to learn. So Luffy is like <laughs> carefree. He doesn't know anything. So whatever he learns as we, he goes along is what we're learning, in a sense. That's, that's, a, that's true. Saying? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in a sense, like, yeah, people may know of the warlords. You know, like a lot, a lot of these things, like when they reveal for the like first time, like when they reveal Garp, and they're like, Garp is a uh, is a what do you call it? The name, the famous. Yeah. Uh, Wait, we'll talk about Garp. Why did you tell definitely. us about it and all these things? Yeah. There's a couple of information that we don't know, but we learn as we go because we're following the story of Luffy. So as as we're going along, we're learning things as well. So I'm pretty sure like people know who these people are. So we, we should probably move on to Usopp, but since you mentioned it, I just I just want us to go over. So how did you feel about Garp's portrayal in this? Like, um, it was a, yeah. it was very interesting. It was in, very interesting, but I feel like uh, the revelation of Garp was too soon, because in the yeah. anime, it it was a bit later. It was all the way back in uh, it was it uh, Ara Arabasta, right? Yeah, Arabasta. it was all the way back then. No, no, what the seven? It, it basically, it happens way later. It happens way later. And I appreciate Garp's character portrayal. Like, he was, uh, what should I say, Scottish? I don't know what that accent was. Yeah, was it, it drew or... on me. Yeah, Scottish. You're, you're right, Scottish. It threw, it, threw, it, it, was, it was beautifully, like, his character was beautifully done. Like, he's Scottish, mm. and Luffy is Brazilian. So, like, you mm. wouldn't have, have, like, if you were watching for, for the first time, you wouldn't have drawn a conclusion. 
So, like, yeah. I don't really like the whole, like, how he, Luffy just looks through a, uh, 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 what do you call it? A, but, but was it a Morkless? Or what do you call those things? Telescope? Yeah, know. what do you call those? Binoculars? Yeah, he just looks through it. Binoculars, yeah, he just, uh, monoculars, mono, I don't know. Monoculars, yes. Yeah. Garp, and he's just like, no. yeah, the, I bet that particular scene for the revelation that Garp is his grandfather could have been much better played out. It was just yeah. like, they rushed it, I feel like. And I also feel like maybe they kind of depowered. I mean, they never showed, really showed God genuinely trying, but I feel like they, like, I wanted, I really, one of the questions I really wanted to ask Midi and Rusty was, I was going to be like, like, because we, you and I know how powerful Garp is, but based on the way he was portrayed yeah. in this season one, I wonder how newbies are going to think about Garp. Like, are they going to think that Mihawk is more powerful than Garp? They're probably gonna think that, aren't they? Like, I mean, I, uh, I, feel I mean, like Garp's not in his prime, conclusion. but yeah, like Garp's not in his prime, Garp admittedly. But I think, I bet he could, I bet he could still take me, better, Mihawk. Yeah. I think, I bet he could still take on Mihawk, even as he is right now. If he really went like in a yeah, death match, like let's say. Because the thing is, when they introduce Garp as Luffy's grandfather, and when Garp comes in and starts re like getting on Luffy, the first thing Luffy yeah. says to his crew is like. Don't, uh, that's my grandfather. Don't don't try anything stupid. He's too ov ov. Like don't do anything. He's he, he really when he hits yeah. me it hurts. He that's the first thing he tells his crew. To show yes. Him, like, like Luffy's not afraid of anything. When he hits me, but he's afraid of his grandfather. Grandpa, when yeah. he hits me, it hurts somehow. And that's true. And that's that's something that they miss. Nothing hurts they miss Luffy. Luffy. Nothing hurts Luffy. Exactly. So when, when, when he hits me, that statement in the anime, everyone's like, what the heck? Punches yeah. and bullets don't hurt Luffy, but Garp's punches hurt Luffy. And everyone's like, why does that happen? And it's a foreshadowing for Haki later on. True. You see? So they messed up. Good point. Yeah, man. I feel like that introduction of Garp as Luffy's grandfather was completely too early. It was... It yeah. Was, uh, and they I didn't know, say that was, statement. Yeah. If Luffy had at least thrown that statement out there, it would have made it a bit better. But now that you mention it, that was a mixed up, missed opportunity. They should have said, Luffy should have thrown out a line and be like, "We." Uh, he should have. He should have been like, "Now nah, we need to go." Like when my grandfather punches me, it actually hurts. Like he should have said that at least once, just to make it sure that yeah, people understood Luffy, that like um, this guy's different. Like he, like Luffy could just be like, "We need to run." It's my grand. Yeah, something about his punches. Like Luffy should have made it obvious that. Something's different about his grandfather. It's not just a normal. Yeah, some, exactly. Exactly. And one other thing, like throughout the whole of One Piece, um, pre time skip, that's we're talking about the anime now, pre time skip, mm -hmm. Luffy is always sure when it comes to his fights. There's not one time that he says that he gets scared of his opponent. He's been like, I'm, I'm scared of this. I can't do this. Every time he's like, I can take this guy. I can take this guy. It's only mm -hmm. up until the point where he meets Kuma that he's going to go all desperate and when kuma starts <laughs> teleporting his um, crewmates but every fight until then in this particular scene uh in this particular live action there's it already shows luffy being desperate in a sense when he becomes trapped by buggy when you see it in the anime he, when he's trapped by buggy and that's uh in the he's not really desperate he's just like buying time just casually like he's not afraid of anything he's just trapped mm -hmm. but in this sense they kind of do a flashback and make it like seem as if he's like lost all hope or it's impossible for him to win so i, I don't really mm. like the whole how they portray yeah. Luffy as because <clears throat> luffy is so carefree he can be like i'll fight anyone he's not afraid of how long he's not afraid of anyone he's just like oh, i'll fight him i'll fight him because <laughs> In the whole anime, you see Luffy just belting people back and forth. He's carefree. He mm -hmm. doesn't. He's always sure of himself and his strength. He's always sure. Mm -hmm. Up until that point when he meets Kuma, that's when he's like, everyone's like, oh, he finally took an L. This is it, like, mm -hmm. Like, yeah. That's the point where Luffy's like, oh shit, we could actually lose the Straw Hats. Mm -hmm. And the only two points where you see like Luffy can't fight anyone is only when pre time skip is only when he meets kuma and only when he meets his grandfather so that will show mm -hmm. you how, like how strong his grandfather is and how strong kuma is you get what i'm saying yeah so in that sense yeah missed i kind of missed a, like a, a whole yeah sense of foreshadowing but i don't know with that let's move on to like usopp and kaya that they're so we'll talk about that and then we'll go into sanjay but 
for what about the the arc rate? How did you feel about like Usopp? Let's start off with Usopp. How do you feel about Usopp? Also, yeah. um, the I feel like they 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 should have uh, done a prosthetic nose. That's me personally. Mm-hmm. I I just feel like they should have done, gave Usopp a longer nose. Uh, but the character in itself, uh, he's pretty much portraying Usopp really nicely, being like confident yeah. and stuff, and also being like uh, scared and stuff like that. So his portrayal is. I just feel like if they're gonna do prosthetics on the fishman, they could have just gave him a long nose, because that's <laughs> Usopp's whole thing, right? He's got a long nose. They make fun of him being long nosed, and there's one point where even Luffy can't um, tell one of the CP, the swordsmen for um, yeah, yeah. CP9, I think. Zoro will be sitting right Usopp there apart. just because of the yeah. Lo- yeah, long, nose. just because of the long nose. Exactly, that's that's Usopp's whole thing, long nose. Uh, but um, I mean, <coughs> the guy who portrays him portrays him like pretty much really nicely, and yeah. with Kaya, I think Kaya's character, mm. yeah, pretty nicely. They portrayed them, and I especially love um, what's his name, the the butler, um, Kuro. Kuro, oh, man, that yeah. guy was on point. Yes, that guy yes, was on point. I'd say so. best uh, next to Buggy, best mm-hmm. guys. Okay, who okay. carried the yeah that particular scene. Yeah, next to Buggy. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, but I feel like the whole arc in itself gave a bit too much uh, with. Character, I mean, like the the whole building with Nami and um, what's her name, Kaya. Kaya. That, that whole scene where they end up bonding, I felt like that was, I don't know, that maybe stole the show give, from um, Nami sometime. Yeah, it stole the show from and Usopp. It, it should have been was, Usopp. Usopp should have arc. saved yeah. Kaya. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It should have been Usopp, Usopp to shine in his arc. Usopp didn't get yeah. a chance to shine in his own arc, and that's kind of the missed opportunity. So one of the things I said in my personal review was that I wish they had extended the anime time in general. And I'm okay with the friendship between Nami and Kaya, but uh, maybe they could have had it been a moment where like Nami and Kaya are running away from Kuro. Uh, maybe Luffy steps in, drags Kuro away. Or maybe before Luffy steps in, Usopp comes in and pushes Kuro away. And then Usopp like does some heroic stuff. And then like when Kuro's about to like I'll take uh, uh, Usopp, then Luffy comes in. But Usopp needed to have his moment, and he didn't have a moment in his uh, our own arc. He didn't and have one a other moment, thing, that's right. Yeah. He, was, he was just like a side character. All like the even time. Zoro got a moment, like Zoro's backstory was told in that arc. They pushed out Usopp's. Usopp's backstory was, yeah, I wanted to also criticize Usopp's backstory, I think was the weakest for me in the whole story. Because it was just like maybe one or two scenes, and like so i mean i was saying this in my my personal review that like Usopp has a lot of like like for me personally when i watched him the first time i was really annoyed at his character because like why does this guy lie so much he just lies about everything he can't stop and eventually it comes up it comes around that it's like he lies because you know his father is a pirate and he wants his dad to come back and he's like i don't know trying to what you know what's the term about some people say that like you you say out what you want to happen in the universe and it'll attract it the law of attraction or whatever like that so in my when they when they gave us backstory and i realized that he was just saying that because he wanted his dad to come back i, I was able to kind of relate that was his wish, was his wish. Wanted, him just like trying to realize what he's like in his heart what he wants to happen and so that kind of for me personally i like that like that got me to start to forgive him for him because i genuinely despised him at first i i personally don't like characters who lie uh, in real life and also in shows i really don't like whenever there's a character that's like their main thing is lying i don't mind if they're like like a thief and what i mean they have to trick people to steal but what i mean is like just like lying for the sake of lying you know what i mean like if nami does a lie to steal i'm willing to forgive that but like Usopp was just like lying out of nowhere the thing that got me to forgive Usopp in the anime was when I learned his backstory and I learned that he developed that habit out of like a desire to have his father come back and at least see his mother once before she dies. You know, like it was a nice story. So I I felt that they didn't do Usopp's backstory justice because for me personally, it meant a lot to me because it made me like Usopp when I really didn't like him at first. So I was especially disappointed with Usopp's backstory. And then... That also added, adds on to the fact that he didn't get to save the day in his own arc. So yeah, just I'd say that was my most, my least liked out of the four arcs that they did. Usopp's arc. 
Yeah. But what I did enjoy Kuro, mm. the other aspects I like, but it's just that because he was supposed to shine and the main guy didn't shine, it like brings everything else down. But I, I actually generally enjoyed everything else in the arc. Kuro, Kuro, I agree with you. He was awesome. Anything else you want to say about the arc? Or? Yeah, they left out Django and they left out the Uso pirates. They left those oh, kids. Oh yeah, out. that's right. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I guess they wanted to make space like too many characters would probably confuse everyone. But I I feel like it would have you know I don't, I don't know it would have made it made sense because I think I feel like uh, Django the the hypno hyp, the the hypnosis hypno hypnotist that guy yeah. I feel like he'll play a bigger role back later on in the future because he joined the Marines after he uh, gave up on uh, the the black cat oh yeah. So and he was like, the one that yeah I feel like I was gonna say he was the one that, that, that was supposed to hypnotize Kai yes. to sign over her will to Kuro yes. but and also and, al al and also he was the one that hypnotized just... Axe and Morgan to make him think that he killed Kuro in the first place yeah, yeah like, that's it, it. That's he's it. too too important of a character that they cut out I forgot all about that but when you mentioned yeah, it, like... yeah and then there's the three little kids the Uso pirates like. Usopp is captain and he's always screaming captain to himself. It just doesn't make sense in the live action while he's calling himself also pirates and the captains. If they well, only no put in those crew. three little kids, yeah. If they, casting, I don't know whether they pull those uh, Not enough time. I'm, I'm okay with the pacing, but like I said, if they had made more episodes, then they could go with the same pace, but slot in more scenes and more uh, story stories. Like if they had like, if they had not made it as obvious that Kuro was like, because some people kind of saw it coming that Kuro was a bad guy, uh, based on what I've seen. Like movies, they could tell that Kuro was a bad guy when they uh, first saw him. If they had made it less obvious, I don't know how they would do that, but if they made it less obvious and sort of dragged out that scene to like have like at least one more episode or half another episode in that village, and then like they could like show Usopp's backstory more, they could include those three kids and just develop it, and then you know, then you can you can have you know. The Nami Kaya friendship, you can have the Zoro backstory, but then you'll also give time to develop Usopp better if they just had more time. But you know, I guess because they were constrained to eight episodes, it makes sense that they had to sacrifice something, and unfortunately, it was Usopp that wound up on the chopping block. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay, I but think we can move on in to that. that sense, I, I feel like, I feel like, mm -hmm. yeah, because they did that, I feel like Usopp is just another side character rather than one of the Straw Hats crew. I'll just say that yeah. that's like my impression of Usopp after that. Yeah, because of true, the whole true. cutting of his backstory. Yeah, true. That, that that's that's a that's a good point. All right. Uh, so let's let's go on then to Sanji and uh, Baratie Aka. So now, uh, first up, what did you think about the, like the set, the Baratie itself, and <laughs> everything? Yeah. Oh man, that was. That, I was actually wondering how they would pull it off, but it actually mm -hmm. worked. It actually did work, like a floating restaurant. Like I was just wondering how they would translate it on, and it, it actually worked. And I like how they great. also had like a nightlife. Like you'd have yeah other other ships that would dock right on that the, the variety. It was it was pretty much I really that's another thing though. I appreciate all the sets and like how they did Surf Village and um, Nami's Village, like mm -hmm. and um, the wow, what was Windmill? Is it Windmill Village? The Windmill Luffy's Village. Luffy's Village. Yeah, Lewis Village. Yeah, it's windmill. It's like translate to windmill, but like bringing those to life, I really appreciate like the whole scenery and the whole environment. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. barate itself was like it. It, yeah. it, it, it was nicely. <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Man. Yeah, and um, oh, uh, for me personally, I think Sanji's no no Zoro. I don't know. I, I actually can't decide now. Originally, uh, no Zoro was my favorite backstory at first. But Sanji's is a close second, I would say, actually, because that was that was the the most accurate. Like the only thing that could have made it more accurate was if they had Sanji be skinny. In fact, they did the whole uh, Zeph cutting yes, off his yes, leg thing even well. better. I... Like it it felt even better in live action because they they also showed like the the camera panning over to where the rock where he used to cut his own leg and like that extra detail just made it hit even harder. It, like made it like better. Like I said, like the only exactly. thing that would have made it better is if you showed the fat kid being genuinely malnourished. But that's harder to do, so I'll forgive them for that. Yeah. No, I, I was actually that's the only thing that I took away from that backstory that I didn't like. 
it would have been the best one if they only showed that i mean they spent a lot of money i think 85 percent of the whole film was behind green screen and they couldn't make a fat kid look skinny that's the only thing against that oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, so how do you feel I, about I would say, like if, if they mm-hmm. it, sorry no finish, finish up what you're saying and then tell me about Sanji. If, if they only if they only made Sanji look a bit skinny, that would be been the best uh, yeah. backstory, a flashback. Perfect. Of, uh, yeah. Easily it would have. And uh, what about like Sanji, you know, modern day Sanji? How do you feel about? That? Um, I feel like I feel like he was he well when he joined the crew, that chemistry between them after he joined the crew, like it was like awesome, like how to see the chemistry, like he just fit right in with everyone mm-hmm. else, and then like yeah. him and Zoro already going at it, like. Yeah, I like that. I like that detail. Yeah, Yeah. but usually he seems more of like a smooth talker rather than like a a guy who's head over heels for Nami and every other pretty Mm. lady. Like he seems more Mm. like a like a sugar. I don't know what you call it. Suave. I think was the term. Yeah, smooth offer. Yeah, suave. Yeah, that's the word. Suave. He seems more suave rather than a guy who's just like look like he's just like crazy. Look at him. He's always falling over for the next girl or stuff like that. Mm. Going nose bleeding all the time. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, his character is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. I feel like I... they they did it pretty well. I just because he has a he has a strange line that Sanji walks, like he's cool, but he's also a goof when it comes to girls. Like he's mm-hmm. cool. We we all know Sanji's cool. Like with the whole suit and everything, like just smoke mm-hmm. and everything. But then when it comes mm-hmm. to girls, he's just like a freaking goof, which is like mm-hmm. the, the contrast in between his character. But this one, they yeah. made him more suave with the ladies as well. But it's just like. For some reason, the ladies don't like him, but in a sense, like the character itself is cool. So it doesn't make sense mm. why the ladies don't like him because of the goofy side. You see what I'm saying? Like ah, towards the end, point, when he tries to, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make sense like how why ladies don't like him. We have to ask towards the end of uh, the yeah no like towards the end of the 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 arc where Sanji's kind of like flirting with. Sanji's uh with sister. Nami's older sister. No, like no yeah, it's 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 a smooth it's I feel like it's a smooth interaction altogether, but for some reason the sister's like not interested in Sanji. Would it, it would make more sense if Sanji started nose bleeding and you know, like doing really goofy yeah. weird stuff. That would have made more sense. Okay, that's true. Rejection. I didn't I didn't think about yeah. that. So an- one thing I personally wanted to mention, so I mentioned this in my personal review, but I'll mention it here for you. So Sanji, I think they did a disservice to his uh, how he was recruited into the the crew, because in the in the in the anime original anime, Sanji does have reservations initially when Luffy asks him, because he is like on the one hand he's also very loyal to Zeph and he doesn't want to abandon Zeph and pursue the dreams, even though he does genuinely want to pursue his dreams. But then like Luffy and Zoro are all about their dreams, and then later on when Zoro's you know defeating Mihawk shows up. Zoro straight up confronts him and then they fight. And like, there's even that line, I think I mentioned this to you in a conversation before, but I'll say it again just for YouTube's sake, that a big part of why Sanji joined the crew was when he saw Zoro fighting Mihawk. And also when he saw Zoro, uh, Luffy fighting Don Creek. That's something I didn't mention in my personal review, but yeah, another... Don Creek, yeah. Don Creek versus Luffy on behalf of Barate and also Zoro fighting Mihawk. Like, Luffy won his fight, but in Zoro's case, Zoro lost, but Zoro... Like, still went for his dream, right? And Sanji seeing these two guys go at their dreams, like, head on, and especially seeing Zoro, who had no chance of winning, but decided to go ahead with it. Those had an impact on him that caused him to want to join the the show, uh, the show, the crew eventually. And so, I think it was a huge disservice to Sanji's character by not including that aspect of that very important pivotal moment. They should have shown Sanji being conflicted, like, one thing to join, like maybe having some interest, yeah. but like not not giving the all clear that he'll go up. And then like, you know, that's very true. show reluctance. And then like later on, after seeing that fight, he'll be like angry, but like kind of, you know, in turn, like have emotion, like strong emotions. Huh? And he'll be like, why didn't he just yeah, like, because he... I think the line was, why didn't he just give up on his dream? I don't know if he said that in the anime or maybe that was just me imagining. But in summary, that's kind of what Sanji should have been like, I should be like, why didn't he just give up on his dream? And then later on, Zap can be like, get the freak out of my kitchen. And go out there and pursue the dream for both of us. And yeah. Sanji would be like, yeah, okay, fine. And then it would have hit better, yeah. 
So yeah, how do you feel? Like, yeah, you that's that? true. That's true. The emotional, the emotional building, like the like the whole. Um, What's the controversy between going, joining the crew, giving up on his dream or keep going? Like, it just sort of, yeah, you're right. There wasn't enough tension built up on that particular decision that he made for joining the crew. Yeah, like when he decides to leave and... Also goes because... Mm -hmm. No, no, you finish, you finish. I, yeah, I think ultimately that also probably didn't happen because they decided to uh, cut out Don Craig. And they decided to make Mihawk being the bad guy. And that, mm -hmm. that also, like, the whole justification of Mihawk being put up by Garp and trying to go after the Straw Hats, it kind of didn't fit. Like, all of a sudden, yes. in between the fight, he's just like, he stops in the middle and he's just like, oh, I, I want to see what you guys will make of it. In the in the anime itself, he's going after, the, um, what's his name? Mihawk is coming for Don Craig. He's chasing him mm -hmm. because Don Craig has a bounty, of course. So that's the whole... While he's coming after Don Craig, he ends up fighting Zoro. See, so there's mm -hmm. like, see, there's mm -hmm. nothing to do with Gap sending Mihawk after yeah. um, Luffy. So yeah. I think because mm -hmm. of that, the, the, the alt in the whole storyline that kind of ruined Sanji's it did a disservice to his the whole con um, yeah yeah the whole decision conflict that yeah like it, I, I think they had the potential to do that storyline. But maybe if they had, like I said, if they had an extra episode, they could have shown, like I said, just show Sanji like uh, having some hesitancy or something. And it, it's it's sad. Like the two last guys that got to join the crew, there wasn't enough time to develop their characters. Usopp and Sanji, they suffered that's heavily true. from the show being constricted, and that's why those last two guys didn't get Usopp didn't get his backstory fleshed out properly, and he didn't get his hero moment. Sanji didn't get his. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to decide to pursue my dreams moment, and that would have added more weight to when he decides yeah. to leave. Because remember when he leaves, he just turns around and like I'll never forget you and all of that. It was it was nice and it made sense, but it didn't feel, you know, like in the anime, like That's they, right. they didn't ha they don't have to make him like get down and bow the way he did in the anime. But I felt like if they did, it would have been even better. It would just have been a throwback. I felt like if they did make yeah. him bow, it would have been a throwback. Yeah, but then, the in my opinion, in my opinion, it wouldn't have. It still that, wouldn't have hit. Would it still wouldn't have hit as badly. Yeah. If they had, if, right. they, they, if they had done the all the stuff that I mentioned and then had him bow, then it would have made more sense. But now, as it is, I think it's okay that he didn't bow. But yeah, it, it's just a missed opportunity. It's just it's it's a big missed opportunity in the case of Sanji, and it's kind of the same problem that what happened with Uso. So yeah. Um, I agree with any, that. Let's, let's move on to talking about Arlong Park. So, how, how do you feel about the way Nami's backstory was done, actually? Uh, first let's off, uh, they introduced Arlong early in the Bharati. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, great. Arlong comes yeah. and he comes and gets Nami. And there was a point where, when Nami was, um, was supposed to go to Coco Village. Instead of going to Coco Village, she decides to stay and stand by um, Zoro. Like the whole, mm -hmm. the whole series in itself, the whole eight episodes, like in the anime, as soon as um, Luffy meets, uh, what's his name, Zoro, he becomes a first mate right then and there. And mm -hmm. then later on, he meets Usopp, he becomes a mate right then and there. And then later on, they meet Nami. I mean, like Nami becomes a mate after leaving, giving ties, I mean, cutting ties with Along and then she becomes a mate then and there and then also you know that's how they pretty much become mates but i i see that it's the anime is a bit too long for them to squish condense everything like so they tried to justify why the crew like became a crew after going through the hardships together so nami like every time when luffy in the in the live action and he's like saying because we're a crew and everything both nami and zoro like we're not a crew we're not a crew like they keep mm. saying that over and over again which it gives direct uh, contrast uh, to the anime. So I, I bet, like, I feel like in that particular state, uh, in that particular essence where, I mean, in that particular scene where Na Nami um, decides to stay and watch uh, with Zoro as Zoro does his duel, they try to mm -hmm. at least sort of, you know, piece together why this crew is like, like, oh, they care about each other in that sense. Mm -hmm. And also when Zoro is injured, like Luffy goes, Luffy's usually this carefree. He cares about his crew, but he's usually mm. like carefree and like they they made him sort of like go and sit beside Zoro and say all these things. 
Like, I don't know. It, it felt like, oh, yeah, they decided to make him, but it, it kind of felt out of character for Luffy. Yeah, and it same. Also felt like out of character for Nami, like, you, you get what I'm saying? But they decided mm. to, I think, translate it more into this, uh, to tell a different sort of story, a different version of One Piece. So I guess people like Migs and Rusty, who haven't seen the anime, they're in watching this for the first time, it would probably make sense more. To them. But uh, True. for the Coco Village arc, they c- kind of left a lot of things out. Like they, in, when they introduced Arlong, I I feel like that was a good time to introduce Arlong, to show how powerful it was, like to drown Luffy and everything, like the first bout. But then yeah. it got, um, it, it felt like uh, a bit too rushed because when Luffy took on Arlong, there there was no doubt, and the fight scene itself, like they were saying, like it, at some point it felt a bit laggy, and you know. Mm-hmm. Like they were just standing around. Yeah. yeah. There's hits and misses here and there, so but yeah, all in I all, was kinda disappointed. Uh, yeah, all in all, um they left out uh Sachi, the six uh, hand um what do you call it? Was oh it the Hachi? octopus guy, yeah, Hachi Hachi. The octopus guy. Hachi Hachan, Hachan. They gotcha. left him out, and he's key and integral for later on yeah. in the series when you go to True. the Fishman Island. He's he's the one they that saved Ray. And they also, and then also left out the sea cow. They also left out the sea cow, the mm. sea sea monster, who also later on in the later on in um what do you call it? He also like takes part and helps out later on in the series. So like they kind of yeah. I don't know how they're gonna go from there, but. I mean, they had to... Yeah, now that you mentioned it, I realized Hachi is a pretty big miss. Not portraying yeah. Hachi is a pretty big and he, miss. And he's the whole, like, when they fight, Zoro and him go head to head. You get it? So, like, mm. I don't know. Yeah, but man, now that you mentioned it, that's a miss. I think too overly critical of, for the uh, anime portrayal, so, but if, if it comes in terms of if we're, if we're just gonna put that to the side, we're not gonna be too critical on that. We're just gonna look at it for what it is as it is. I think, uh, yeah, that's a pretty much like how they introduce the characters is going yeah. through hardships together, and then finally, after the hardships, they trust each other, and then they become a crew. So yeah, a crew. that particular arc pretty much solidifies the whole. It makes sense. Becoming a crew together. I'd say. I'd it say it's sense, it's, yeah. the ch- no, the, ch- the the story flows. A bit, it's still a bit rushed, but it flows well. I'd say it's coherent. Yeah. As a as a story, as a standalone story, it's coherent. The, they just like missed opportunities yeah. there, but even without that, I'd say it still flows. Like, I agree with you there. But yeah, definitely, maybe it still needs to be drawn out a bit more, have more time to develop some of those things. Yeah. So Hachi having yeah. Hachi, uh, yeah, for us, for our sake, it's it's a miss. I'd say from our perspective, that's yeah, a miss. for our sake. Good point there. Um, and, and I was trying to mention. Okay, sorry. Do you want to say something? I was trying to talk about Nami's backstory. Oh, no, uh, just to add on, and also the sea cow. Mm-hmm. So you, when Luffy becomes friends with a sea cow, like you get to see his side of like he's friends with everyone, even animals. So mm-hmm. like he doesn't see anyone differently. Like, because in the end, like Luffy can hear like sea beasts like back in, in the in the future like he can hear them talk yeah i'm just gonna say that so like he's friends with everyone so like those are kind of like undertones like foreshadowing but they missed the out voice of all together, or something so i'm just gonna it's leave it at that yeah 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 um so for me personally one thing about uh yeah nami's nami's backstory i felt was okay but i i, I was missing i don't understand how as a child she would just walk up to Arlong and make the suggestion she did to work for Arlon in exchange for, you know, making the maps and things like that. Like, in my opinion, there, there should have, there was, there's like a missing flashback somewhere that shows Nami getting this yeah. idea of like, you know, I do something for you, you do something for me. Why like, Arlong even needs maps. Yeah. yeah. Why Arlong needs maps. And also from Nami's, from Nami's end, like, she's a child. How, sh- how would she know about like, fair trader? There should have been like, like, she, like, here's how they could have done it in my opinion. They're poor, right? So maybe because they're poor, mm-hmm. the, they could do a scene of like, you know, Nami's uh, mother being like, okay, we can't afford to do this, but if we help our neighbor by saying we do this for them, then they'll give us some extra food, some of their extra fish. And you'd be like, I help you, you help me. And then that would sort of plant the seed in this child's mind that, hey, 
maybe in the future i don't have anything right now but i can offer you some skill of mine and in exchange you give me this so that i help you i help me like i don't understand how a small child gets the idea to make that plan with all along right you know what i mean like it, it just sort of came out yeah. of nowhere in my opinion but they could have just been more accurate and followed the the enemy right i think the enemy i, I, don't, I can't actually remember they go and they kill belmia I think when they killed Belmia and then later on um Along himself discovers like uh portraits or pictures of maps that Nami drew and then that's when he gets Nami and ties locks her up. Okay, you know what so then that, it, they should have uh, done that. Plays a, that would have made more sense. Yeah, they should have just gone and done that. You know. And they when Nami's just locked up, she himself like comes up with a, like it goes in with her character. She's crafty and she always comes out with a, a like a a way to get out of trouble just by using her head. So that that would have, you know, It would have made more sense. You know what, man? Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's even better than the original was even better than my stupid idea. <laughs> and it's most true straightforward and streamlined too. It's like easier, easier to they wouldn't need an extra scene. All they need is just well, they would need an extra scene, but it would be a much shorter scene. It would just After be they killed Belmia. They would have just Along. yeah, seen the pictures there and then Alon would have said and then do this. You know. And then go from there. Yeah, you know, that's totally that's a Yeah. Thing. So that was a miss. Um I I like the scene where, you know, uh, Nami gets like pissed and I was worried about how they would do that. My only downside of it was I it it it, it was still kind of out of place or putting for me when like Inyaki turns around he he goes like, "Of course I will." Whenever it was like kind of like that that kind of took me out of it for a bit. It was too anime for me. Uh the way Inyaki shouted off even though it's exactly like what's in the anime. I loved everything with Nami. on the ground and one anime. I do miss I do miss the part where Nami would was like Teteke Teteke like go away and then eventually she just turns around and says like Luffy help me. They decided to just cut that little yeah, piece out and just go straight. Yeah, they kind of really they they left out a lot of emotion there like after yeah. Nami starts stabbing herself and then Luffy comes and he just tells her Nami like just say it. Tell me what you want, and then she's just like, "Save me!" That that was like a whole lot of emotion that could have been played in, but then they just, you know, they just called, compressed the whole moment. And yeah, yeah I'm interested in. It didn't really. It lost its essence. Yeah, I it feel lost, like yeah. it was. It didn't come out as much. Yeah, I'm disappointed. You're disappointed, right? Because because right. uh, the whole uh, the whole point in Nami in the in the beginning is. She does everything by herself and to a fault where she sacrifices her own life to do do everything. And all up to that point she was always doing things for by her own like for the people that she loved. And she kept doing mm. things by herself, doing trying to do everything that she could to save her people. And it reached a point where she couldn't do anything anymore. And she was at mm. that point of desperation. That's when Luffy comes in and just tells yeah. Nami straight, "Tell me, I'll do it." Yeah. yeah, they just that was a miss. That was a miss. They missed, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally with you. Totally agree. Great there. Moment. Yeah. That was when a lot of people that point in the anime was when a lot of people started watching One Piece for real. That that that's mm-hmm. the point when when Luffy puts that hat on his treasure on Nami's head. That's when everyone mm. started putting their hands out and saying like, "Oh, One Piece is one of the greatest anime." That's when it yeah. started that particular moment. And there was a miss. They could yeah. be better. We we'll have to yeah. see what so Mix and Rusty have to say. The about anime it. that makes that yeah. That stood out for everyone. Yeah. Or oh, most people. Like, no, nah. I mean, I I get it like I get I get like the whole new people who haven't who is not fans of the anime watching this for the first time. The story in itself stands out for itself. Hmm. But if we're going to do like a hard ass comparison between the anime and um the the live action it's it's a miss but in most part why i'd say this is the best live action in most in the most part is because they're more um more accurate to the source material and they're also like they have Oda the creator himself they're telling them it's okay to do this it's okay so it's more accurate more close to the to the yeah. source material so i have no like i'm not you're not happy with some things but you're willing to go with it Yeah, I'm willing to let go with it. Yeah. Uh, All right. Even though um, even though I'm saying they they missed at some places, yeah, I'm still happy with everything. So happy. Okay, so um, is there anything else you want to say about this arc? This uh, the Coco Coco arc? Anything in this arc, the Coco arc, yeah. 
I, I, I would say the last bit where he has a standoff with Garp. Um, they made Garp mm. go out like the whole the whole fight against Arlong. Yeah, that was okay. Straight up, the whole axe and then he splits. That's pretty mm. much accurate as how they did with mm-hmm. the the main scene, and that was fine. I, I I pretty appreciate it. It's just up to the end where they go up against Garp. I mean, they tried to make Garp seem like the the thing that was tracing Luffy all along. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It was. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how I feel. Like he just chased Luffy just to test him, just to test him to see like, oh, he's, he wants to, really wants to be a pirate. That doesn't. Yeah, it's anticlimactic. Yeah, they're all right, right there. So I don't feel like that was the right call to do to make Garp chase Luffy all the way to just yeah. to see his resolve. Yeah, it kind of like breaks character for Garp to be trying to get Luffy to listen to him, and to the point where he beats up Luffy and then just lets Luffy go and do does his own business. Yeah, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. They kind of, I feel like they, they wanted to use Garp and they had, they, they had some good moments there, but they just, they didn't stay, they missed the landing. They, you know, had a nice flight, they, showed us a lot of cool things along the way, but then they, they didn't stick the landing. It just kind of, it, it was another miss again. It was a nice change. I'm okay with what, the idea of what they were trying to do with Garp and, provide an excuse to like us to see Helmepo and uh, Kobe become friends and sort of at least put it into the minds of new people that like Kobe is gonna grow into something that's like a badass later on down the line. Maybe they don't really see it yet but like they can tell that okay this character is someone who has potential to become something even if he's still a little coward right now. But so I was okay with it but then yeah, yeah. That, that landing was just missed. Uh, the fight I, I feel like they almost depowered Garp. Eh? Like I want them to I, I genuinely want to get the idea. Like I said, I want to get an idea from Nix and Rusty when they finish the show. Do you guys think uh, Garp can take on Mihawk? Because they're probably going to say no based on what they've seen. And I wouldn't blame them at this point. because yeah, they, they definitely made Garp look less powerful. Yeah, I feel like that's the case too. Because Garp is the one that's the only one that's been chasing him after Gold Roger. And then he's the one that fought with Gold Roger to... To against all the other emperors, mm. so like, you get what I'm saying. Back in yeah. the day, it was Garp and Gold Roger. Garp and Gold Roger versus so Rocks Garp and freaking on the emperors. Exactly, yeah. he's on the emperor sort of yeah. power scaling. And mm. Mihawk, yeah, he's a warlord, but I don't feel like he's a Mihawk's warlord. not yeah, fighting an emperor. Go up toe-to-toe with the empress. I, I mean, he can he fight, go but toe to toe with the emperor. He could fight because he's the greatest swordsman in the world. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he'd win, but he he could like hold his own. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So then, I guess that kind of brings us to the end of this. So uh, I already gave my review at the one, but I'll say it again here just in case you didn't get it. So for me, I I like to do like uh, an emotional rating where I talk about how I feel as a an anime fan, and then I try to give an objective rating. So initially, when I did my first review, my thoughts of it was. As a fan, I was disappointed by a, a quite a few things, like uh, Usopp and Sanji, like I mentioned here. And then, those, those were kind of like the two major things that disappointed me as a fan. Usopp and Sanji, the, the missing out Sanji's decision to join the crew, and Usopp not even getting his hero moment. Although, admittedly, one thing I forgot to mention, I do kind of like that they just went ahead with like Usopp and Kaya kind of being a thing. Because again, like, I'm okay with that. At first oh, I was yeah. like, are they going to go with it? But then I was like, no, nah, yeah, you know what, fine. this I mean, is a live action show. Implied. Yeah, it was implied. And like, them doing it in here, I was like, yeah, okay, you know what, I'm, I, I'm not too cool with them doing too much romance in this, but this is one that I'm like, yeah, you know, go ahead, it's all good. And it makes more sense if it's this one. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so, so as far as uh, coming back to like uh, rating, I wound up giving it, as a fan, I wound up giving it a 7. 7.5 at the most, which for me is like, I enjoyed it, but I'm unhappy with it on certain aspects. And there's, funnily enough, I wound up kind of ending, like even after talking with you now, I've, I'm still kind of sticking by that. Like, I, I realized a few more things that I don't like, but you also helped me realize a few things that I do like. So it's like, my opinion has kind of evened out and I'm on the same level again. 
So as a fan, seven. Objectively speaking, though, I would say there's been a change. So initially, I gave it a six, a solid six, not six point five or anything. But now I feel like it's a bit better than a six, maybe six point five. Like I think maybe I was being too critical of it. So that's how I sort of changed. So I went from us as a so there's an objective non-fan like uh, opinion of the show would be six point five, which is a change from my original thought yesterday when I did my original review. So that's where I'm fitting. So I guess I'd like you to do the same thing. Give it a give it a, a fan rating and an objective rating if you can on the show, and then we'll close it off. All right. So basically, for fan rating, um, I feel like as a fan watching this. Uh, I'm happy that they finally got around doing a uh, live action of one of the big three, and not just one of the big three, but one of the, the uh, arguably the best animes ever created. Because <laughs> One Piece in itself, like after how many so 10, 12 years of producing, 20 actually, some 20 26. years of producing animes, it always 26 oh. years of producing anime and manga, it managed to be on the top almost every single year. And mm -hmm. it's relevant every single year, and yeah. it's finally getting the recognition as a live action. So, after after this live action, I feel like a sense of appreciation to everyone who put in hard work, not to Netflix, not just because they produced the live action, but they also gave a chance for the creator himself to have a say, a few like tear words here and there, rather than cut him mm -hmm. out and like pull another avatar where they make everyone all the fire benders Indian and everything and do like a whole weird thing with the fire bending. Like they yeah. actually decided to stick true to the source material, and I feel like a sort of sense of like appreciation towards Netflix for what they're trying to do and what they actually did. So my rating for it as a fan, like it, at this points where the whole Nami hat thing, even though it didn't quite hit, I did get a, a bit of emotions there, like recalling everything that mm -hmm. we as fans have been through, and then all yeah. for those Baratier when Sanji's they cut off the leg and he's, even though it did not hit. The, the emotional like um, peaks that it could have with a couple of um, tweaks here and there and more, I would give it a solid seven, seven point two, seven point two. I'll give it that. As a, <laughs> as a fan, that's like uh, as a fan, I'm pretty much happy with One Piece finally getting the recognition that it deserves. Objectively. Okay. Objectively, as a, as a non-fan, as someone who probably just watches net shows on Netflix, I feel mm -hmm. like they could have done it a whole lot better. Like mm -hmm. if this was a new show that I have no idea of and I'm watching it, and I have no history on the whole lore and the backstory, I'd probably might watch it once or might just skip it all entirely. So I'd probably give it like a, a, a solid 5.5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I didn't okay. know anything about yeah. it, I wouldn't watch it again. So like, so five is like a mid, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Like it's not even a, yeah. it's like a genuine mid. And then it's, it's like a genuine six mid. is, yeah. And six is like, if you give it a shot, you might like it. That's that's my opinion of it. No, where it's like I'd, you I'd have give to it a give five. some. It's mid. Yeah. Yeah. And but you have if to. If I be, didn't know anything about shot. One Piece, the backstory, I wouldn't watch mm. it. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Like I'm yeah, gonna yeah. watch it one time and be like, oh okay, what's this? And then might never pick it up again. That's yeah, that's that's just, a mid, yeah. yeah, that's a mid. That's a fine. Right, that's that's cool. a Alright, I think uh that's where we're gonna leave it, bro. Thank you so much for going through this like long in-depth discussion with me, man. Uh, it was great. I definitely enjoyed yep. having this talk with you. And uh yeah, yep. is there uh, anything else one piece radio on it? We'll point do it again. Uh yeah, is there anything yeah, else sure, you wanna sure, say before we go? Thank or? you. Um, all good. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for Bonnie's for more content like this or other good <laughs> stuff. Bonnie always is the right yeah. way to get you uh, some good topics to talk about. So that's all <laughs> I have to say. Thanks, Bonnie, for having me. No worries, all right. Thanks, Matt Jack. All right, guys. This is Bonsai signing out. Catch you all then. <laughs>